If you could describe yourself with one word, what would it be? That one word that describes the things you enjoy, your passions, your purpose, your mission in life. That one word that connects everything you are. I recently read Evan Carmichael's book, Your One Word. Evan says that every great person can be described with one word. Steve Jobs, impact. Oprah Winfrey, heart. Martin Luther King, equality. Notice how these people have a higher purpose than just a movement or a business. It'll be important for later. Now, it is incredible how much meaning one word can have. This translates perfectly into business. Like Evan says in his book, a business is not about making a product or a service, it's about connecting with your customers. It's about sharing a purpose. People will be more likely to buy from you when they share the same purpose as you. Think about Apple. Apple customers have an emotional experience when they buy an Apple product. Think about this. Steve Jobs' purpose was to create the tools people will use to change the world. It's not about selling a computer, it's about values. When someone buys an Apple product, they feel they are part of this greater purpose. And that was part of Apple's core marketing strategy. Let me tell you a story from Steve Jobs' biography. In early Apple days, Steve Jobs wanted to hire John Scully, which was the marketer behind the Pepsi challenge, as the CEO of Apple. Scully wasn't sure if he wanted to do that, but this happened. Let me read it straight from the book. Scully uttered one last demuro, a token suggestion that maybe they should just be friends and he could offer Jobs advice from the sidelines. Anytime you're in New York, I'll love to spend time with you. After a weighty, uncomfortable pause, he issued a challenge that would hunt me for days. Do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water, or do you want a chance to change the world? I realized for the first time that I couldn't say no. Evan explains that there are three types of marketing. First is feature selling. That's where you tell the customers all the features, flavors, and technical aspects of your product or service. Second is benefit selling. That's when you explain the benefits the customer gets by buying your product. Third and most powerful is core selling. That's when you tell your market why. Why are you passionate about this product? Why did you build this product? What is the higher purpose you're trying to achieve? Here's an example of this presented by one of my favorite entrepreneurs of all time, the great Steve Jobs. To me, Marketing is about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investment and caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last few years. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and feeds. It's not to talk about MIPS and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And <laughs> the sales were going like this. And then they tried Got Milk, and the sales have gone like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all, and, and one of the greatest jobs of, of marketing in the, if the universe has ever seen, is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes. And yet, when you think of Nike, you feel something different than a shoe company. In their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the products. They don't ever tell you about their air soles and why they're better than Reebok's air soles. What does Nike do in their advertising? They, they honor great athletes and they honor great athletics. That's who they are. That's what they are about. 
we started working about eight weeks ago, and what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for? Where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. That's what we believe. Now, let's talk about money. This is some advice from Richard Branson on the topic of money. If you go into business purely to make money, if that's your sole motive, you are better off doing nothing. Steve Jobs was worth over a million dollars when he was 23, over 10 million dollars when he was 24, and over a hundred million when he was 25. He had all the money he'd ever need. But what happened? He continued to work at Apple almost until he passed away. He had a higher purpose. He wanted to make a dent in the universe. He wanted to change the world. And the list goes on and on. Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, Walt Disney, Sam Walton, Steve Jobs, Nikola Tulsa, none of them started a project with the main intention of making money. They all had a higher purpose, which led to monetary wealth. A great example of this is The Honest Company, founded by Jessica Alba and Christopher Gabby. Jessica was not happy how many children's products had a lot of toxic chemicals that hadn't been properly tested. She decided to fight back with Honest. She launched The Honest Company, providing eco-friendly, non-toxic, affordable products for kids. They worked to create better, healthier products for children and to limit their carbon footprint by shipping ground in that air. Christopher Gavi said, we don't talk about the product, we talk about the change in the world we want to see and how do we accomplish that. After three years in business, the company was valued at one billion dollars. That is why finding your one word is so important. Your word means more than just letters. It means a vision, passions, values. The Betterment Project wasn't meant to make money, but to inspire people to live the life they desire, to have complete freedom over their lives, for you to do what you want, when you want, how you want. And that's my mission. If you haven't found your word, take a piece of paper and do this exercise with me. Write down all the things that make you happy. Write down what's your favorite movie? What's the type of music you like? What hobbies do you enjoy? What type of people make you happy? What activity makes you feel great? Keep writing. List all of the things that make you feel great. If you need to pause this video, pause it and continue because we got a few more steps. Now, from that list, what is the common theme? What connects those things on your list? For me, I enjoy hanging out with people who are truthfully and apologetically themselves. Those who aren't affected by the judgment of others. Those who are completely free. I enjoy traveling the world and visiting new places when I want to, not when other people allow me to. Next, write down the things you hate, the things you dislike. This helps a lot of people find who they are by finding who they aren't. Write down the things you dislike. For me, I hate that most people have to live life of quiet mediocrity, that people can't be who they are because they fear being judged. I hate how society was set up that way. I don't like the fact that people don't do what they want when they want because there's something holding them back. Whether it's an insecurity they grew up with or people around them treating them like they're not good enough. Those are the things that I passionately dislike. That is why my one word is freedom. What is yours? Write it down in the comments below. I am really curious to know why you chose your word. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, 
disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.